Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Doghouse Podcast. Uh, today, we are going to go deep dive into some numbers for the Georgia Bulldog preview. We're going to get advanced uh, metric stats. We're going to get a uh, breakdown of the overall running backs of the nation and the, and the SEC, how that works, quarterbacks. Also, we're going to talk some recruiting news. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the podcast. That'd be really great. And today we got uh, Josh uh, Hatchner from Dog Stats on Twitter and also his uh, website. How are we doing today, Josh? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you uh, coming on. And we were just talking earlier, Josh is uh, around that uh, small town of uh, Griffin, uh, way down south. Uh, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, so that's great. The power of Zoom here. But we got uh, we had some mutual friends uh, out to check on, so that's that really great. And uh, also, I wanted to touch on it. how did you actually get into the uh, dog stats? Uh, I think it's really been a great uh, website breakdown of numbers. We'll get into that later. So how'd that come about? <laughs> well, honestly, it was just like a I don't know, like a Microsoft Excel fetish, really. Um, I used to do it for fantasy football and okay. then just got burned out on fantasy football. And I just had the itch. So I just I was like, this was in 20. 17 or 18 i think so i was just like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna start looking and i always liked what bud elliott had to say and and bill Connolly. so i was just i just wanted to figure it out so i just started kind of uh tracking data and using it and just sort of kind of explaining it to to georgia fans and then you know of course right about then georgia just got on an unprecedented roll so it's kind of picked up some steam it's been a lot of fun made a lot of met a lot of great friends i mean just all over the place on twitter and the internet i mean uh, sort of partner Graham Coffey over at Dog Central. And he and I became quite good friends. And, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of, it's been great. And now, you know, I've gotten to meet you, Trey. This is kind of fun. This is, like you say, the power of Zoom and, the, and uh, you know, social media can take a lot of hits and can be a kind of a toxic place, but there's a lot of positivity you can put into it and, and then you can get out of it too. So, yeah, I just kind of started out and I just wanted to keep messing with numbers and I just put it to, to you know, at first UGA and I've really kind of, expand it out to most of the power five yeah that's that's really great we'll, we'll definitely get a deep dive yeah and then uh, i want to touch on this just because it's been such a, uh, a a great week uh starting out we're gonna touch on um the um dogs recruiting got four really big wins with with in the last week uh, i believe it's four offensive linemen a d lineman so, yeah, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. One of the ones that really stood out to me was the uh, Nair Daniels four-star. The kids, uh, I think he's been quoted at 6'8", 370, 360, I've heard that. Just a, a just a mammoth of a man. And um, we, I think we really needed some O-linemen in this class, and Stacey Searles and Kirby's definitely been on it. So we're yeah, going to get your thoughts on, the, on that. Well, broader picture, I'm not – you know, you and I were talking off air. I mean, I enjoy and follow recruiting, but I'm not an expert, and I, I just don't have the bandwidth to take it all in. But, yeah, this week, and it's been on a roll. Uh, a couple things. Yeah, I mean, everyone was kind of wringing their hands last year when we brought in Stacey Searles. And, of course, uh, you know, he, you know, picked right up where uh, Matt Luke left us and maybe even proved our offensive line. I mean, if you if you follow Graham, Graham Coffey, Dog Out West, and he does a lot in his little breakdowns and talking about what the – offensive line does and you know really deep dive in there so yeah it's exciting to get these guys a lot was made about their size and then you add it all up and and how huge they are and how tall and how big they are it's pretty exciting but also talking about uh that kid he's from new jersey so i just love that the, the recruiting footprint is nationwide for georgia and, and for the staff it just speaks to what Kirby and, and the guys are doing and how they can go in somewhere and get the guys they need. And like you said, we needed some alignment in this class and man, did we, or we're just loading them up in their, in their quality and their elite. And so, yeah, it's exciting to know because um, you know, that's where it all begins is man is in the trenches, as you know. Exactly. Uh, another good thing is, you know, Kirby is getting some guys in state, but like you mentioned, he's going way out nationwide. Got this other guy, uh, Michael uh, Uni. I believe pronounce his name, Corp, uh, Corpus Crow, Texas, another big guy, 6'7", 335. Um, got another, Daniel Calhoun was a big pickup. Um, he's uh, he's a Georgia guy, so that was another great pickup. But just like the size of these guys, it's like the Great Wall of Georgia. Is yeah. Back. But yeah, just another, I just want to mention, just another great week. We got four, a lot, uh, still number one recruiting class, got 26 guys in. As you know, as a Georgia fan, you know, we're kind of like they're they're stacking this class out really early. It's usually like 
towards signing day or during the season. So uh, we're just uh, really loading up. We got Kirby Smarts on a mission, and uh, it's just great. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a great day to be – great time to yeah. be a dog. Yeah, I mean, we're we're getting positions of need. We're getting quality players, and the the average – you know, players is extremely high. You know, I think there was talk of getting, making the all-time class. I don't think that's going to happen unless there's a five-star flip down the road, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the the class is so good. It's going to be exciting to know what's coming down the pipe. And, you know, I was listening to to Bud Elliott and the cover three guys, and they're saying (laughs) as scary as it sounds that Georgia might have, uh, can threaten the number of NFL draft picks next in next April's draft. So, um, it's easy to to just overlook what's on campus right now and how good it is, but it, man, they keep rolling. It is it's a, a good time to be a Georgia fan. It is for sure. We got to enjoy every every day, every game, and good uh, good trash talk and good talking in the off season. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I want to jump into it. Uh, so Josh has his advanced uh, metrics. I'll uh, want to get the breakdown pretty much over off, off the success rate and of the 2022 and 2022 rate. Uh, I was looking at some of that. Just want to make, get a breakdown of that, and we can kind of go from there. I'll, yeah, I'll what, turn you up and let you go. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I've put it's in a PDF form. You can go to dog dogstats.com right now. We have the the SEC preview out. We were just working so hard. Chris Marler from Saturdays Down South, Fern Funquist on Twitter is a friend of mine, and we've been working on it together. And we were just so excited to get something out there. So we dropped the SEC, and we're working this week um, on the rest of the Power Five. So it'll be out. So you'll have all 69 teams and what I do, if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow any of the blogs that I write on and stuff, you know, I talk sort of about the analytics numbers that you're going to see from the SP plus that Bill Connolly uses and, and, uh, uh, but Elliot references these stuff, these stats and it's, you know, success rates and stuff like that. So if you, if you look at it, but basically the success rate is just a formula based on how many yard uh, percentage of plays where you meet the, uh, Required number of yards to be a play to be successful. On first down, it's 50% of the yards to gain on first down. Second down, it's 70% of the yards to gain on first down. And the third and fourth down, 100%. So obviously the more plays, and it's it's really just kind of like a, a numbers, uh, you, almost like you're the term, you know, in front of the chains or behind the chains or whatever, staying staying on on uh, on schedule. You know, you'll hear that a lot in broadcasts. And that's just sort of kind of putting a number to that. So obviously you want a very high success rate on offense. Georgia was over 50 I think approaching 51% last year, Ohio State, Tennessee, all were in the 50s. Um, And then you want a lower success rate allowed. Basically, they're converse. You know, what you what your defense allows, you want that to be low. So Georgia's defense has been elite over the last few years. Um, And they've been, you know, I think in 2021, they were like 33 or 34% success. So like, you know, two out of three plays were either negative yards gains or didn't, you know, didn't meet these stats. So it was just just a just a punishing defense. Um, yeah, you can see it that you've got it up there right now. You can see last year, yeah, UCLA, Oregon, Georgia, and USC were all up there. Tennessee right there was the, the last team that that broke that 50% threshold of success rate. So yeah, if you look at that list right there, which is in the guide, you'll see it's pretty easy to see. Okay, these these teams are are elite offenses. And then conversely, you see Illinois, Ohio State was surprisingly had a really good defense at 34% success rate, allowed Georgia at 35 last year. And they actually took a couple of hits in the last couple of games between um, the uh, the SEC championship and the uh, the game versus Ohio State, two really good offenses. So it's not surprising that they they dropped a few notches, but they still still finished fourth in that metric there. Um, and yeah, so it's just, you know, it's one of these stats. If you get this guide, you'll see that that number a lot. It just tells you how how good your offense or how, and or how efficient is a term that a lot of analytics guys use. Um, and yeah, the higher the number, the more efficient you are. Um, and then the other number that you're going to see, it's a little, it's a, it's a kind of a, you know, if you think of it as just a, another layer of uh, is EPA, which stands for expected points added. doesn't really matter. It's loosely based on what, and it's, ba- this is, is, is got down distance and, and field position in play. So it just says how, what, if you're first and 10 at your own 20, that, that play has a lower expected added value to the game than if you were at first and goal at the seventh, right? So just, so where you are in the field and how you do and how you ex, uh, execute and how many yards you get is what fact what that number goes into that. So that's EPA. So 
the more yards you gain past that success rate, you know, that fit, like I told you 50% of the yards to gain on first down. So if you get five yards, that's going to be a good EPA, but not a great EPA, where if you get a 27 yard play that takes you from the 20 into the other team's territory or right at it. Yeah. That's going to be a higher number, a uh, higher EPA. So, so, um, so Georgia, that that's that's sort of you'll hear that number and related to explosiveness and stuff like that and it's and that epa is per play average right so if you see that number that's just what you do and how good you are on a per play average so you can theory you could have um, a team like army or a triple option team that has high success rate but they're going to have a lower epa just because it, you, as you know you watch army navy game it takes a lot of plays to get down the field to get into scoring position and then as they get inside the 20s it gets harder and harder and harder to move the ball so they the, the epa is just another added metric we can look at again if you look at um the that's explosiveness if you can go up to the one uh, ahead of that one um if if you got it yeah yeah here's the epa the explosiveness is kind of uh maybe a, a topic for another discussion another day but uh yeah i mean this the past epa right there kansas ohio state georgia were all in the top three and of course tennessee right there that just tells you how um how efficient they were passing the ball and of course you can see uh on the offensive rushing the ball you can see ucla and you can see right there that ucla is uh the was the best team in value uh using epa at 0.382 but you look at the passing number for the number one team is 0.538 so you'll hear that a lot that yeah, passing is more efficient. Elite pass, elite scoring team. The lead offenses are going to pass the ball. That can show you right there. And you also notice that some of those teams that have high EPA rushes are have the mobile quarterbacks. Um, so those are almost like you know the RPOs. You know it's an extension of the of the pass plays. But you'll see the traditional running teams may have a good it may have a good success rate, but you're going to see them their EPA kind of come go down again. You know one of the you know going I think. A lot of Georgia fans can think about man ball, you know, was one of those terms we had when Kirby took over and what we like to do is run the ball, but you know, that's no longer the case, but that's kind of what, what the fans saw. And in the other offenses, some of the elite offenses out there was a lot of passing and that's how you put up points and Georgia's put up, um, I averaged almost 40 points the last three years. And that's because, you know, a Todd Munkin led offense just really opened up the passing. And, and again, it's, it's, this isn't like to try to, some people just, you know, it's all in good nature. It's, you know, I don't care. I just want to see the score. I just want to I just shut up nerd. Just let me watch the game. But this is just another layer to put on top of what you do as a fan. If you're just a fan, you want to watch the game. But if you're, you know, uh, an X's and O's guys, this is just another way to look at the game and explain it. That's kind of what I like to do on Twitter is just be like, no, I don't, I'm not trying to argue that what you're saying about you know, footwork or with the uh, pocket presence or the route running capability. No, I'm just, I'm trying to add to it. So, and I, and I really don't, I, a lot of people use it to, to model, to predict or gamble mainly, but I don't do that. I, I, I will certainly talk about it in terms of point spreads and lines and stuff like that. I don't bet, but I do like that. Cause that's just another number for me. I just think that those numbers are all, all of these numbers can kind of tell you how good a team is and where they are and where they're not. And then, I've been talking a lot. I'll let you catch up, but just in this, we're talking about 2022, but what, but what I've in the guy, what I've got laid out for you is you can see the good offenses. You can see where they were, where they were good passing, where they were high success rate, but also what they return in ter, um in production. So you can see that, you know, it's easy to say, Oh, Georgia tech in 2020 or 2021 were returned like 80% of their, off, uh, of their offense and defense combined or something, which is great, but that's not a good offense that they return. So as you look at these teams you, and you see that Georgia is only returning, you know, 55%, but they're pr- returning 55% of a good offense. And you can see where they were. And it's all laid out in that guide. It's color coded and it's a lot of information, but check it out. And it's like just a couple bucks for the SEC one. So it's not, um you know it's not the cost of a uh, it's less than a cup of coffee is i guess probably the way to... yeah. so and and look I, i'm on twitter at dog stats hit me up follow me ask any questions it's been fun uh it's you know what i always say is like i like to be part of the community of people talking about georgia football and that's uh i'm i'm you know i've had guys tell me hey can you do this i'll do it i love looking up stuff and i looked up a all-time passing numbers for for Marler today to tell when he discovered that uh only two Auburn quarterbacks have ever passed for over 3,000 yards in a oh, season wow. so that's I just love I just love the numbers so uh but thank you for showing up that showing the guide there that was uh and yeah and and uh what so that was a lot to 
back me up, ask me questions. Yeah. What did make sense? What does, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, real quick, what stood out, just looking at that, I was surprised um, UCLA was one of the top, like, rushing teams. I know uh, Chip Kelly, a little bit of a balance. So that was, you know, they were number one in that. Uh, yeah, they were number one rush EPA. Yeah, again, that's because DTR was a running quarterback. So you're going to see that traditional running attacks, right. maybe, you know, you know, like a Wisconsin, you think of them, or Iowa. It's very hard to get, you know, big, efficient, big-time efficiency numbers out of that type of offense. But, but when you have a running quarterback, yeah, man. I mean, just think about it. They're not going to run the ball more than seven, eight times a game. And then when they do, they're picking their, their you know, it's design runs or RPOs where they can get chunk yardages. And that's how that EPA gets gets uh, racked up because um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, and also it's where you are in the field and how you get those yards, man. You know, a, a 11 yard run on third and second and nine at the 30 yard line is going to be an extremely valuable play. And that's a lot of times you see these quarterbacks that just have the, the nose for the ball, the nose for the game, or they're not, you know, just take that and can, and make plays out of nothing. All that Caleb Williams too, is just an elite rusher there too. You'll see right. them. I think they were, uh, they were up there and they uh, numbers too, and sort of rush efficiency and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, you can, that's a number right there. Okay. Well, let's look at that. Why is UCLA uh, that high in that number? Let's go dig down and dig a little deeper and, and you can, you can get that in this guide. You really can. That's great. Yeah, great. Really great information. Um, yeah, and to put you on the spot because we're talking about quarterbacks, we'll uh, we'll talk about it. So, how about player efficiency? Or and, and then coming in, I know Georgia's got an unknown guy, Kevin Carson Beck. In your opinion, who's probably going to be uh, potentially the top quarterback in the SEC for twenty twenty three? If you had to pick, um, it's it's right now. I think. I mean, Jaden Daniels seems to me like the obvious choice. Um, he was he was really good last year and, and his and kind of came in mid year. Um, he, I just feel like he's if he can throw the ball a little better and to and and stay within the the confines of that offense and get some balls downfield. He's got some elite pass catchers there. I just think that Jane Daniels would be the guy that just seems to be ready to take that next step up. They've got a lot of talent around them. They're coming in on a good year. They seem to be one of the I don't they're not even really the dark horse. So they're they're, they're you know predicted to compete for the sec west title um kj jefferson's one of these guys that if you look in the guide you can see that he had a pretty good pass epa there uh number one and and these are guys are coming back so you're not going to see um you're not going to see stetson bennett here who he would have been the number one quarterback you're not gonna see hendon hooker here but these are the guys that are coming back and that um ranked by uh total EPA, which is just every play that they play and you add it up. And then the EPA is the per play average. So yeah, KJ Jefferson, you can see Jaden Daniel there, Jackson Dart for Ole Miss. It'd be interesting to see if Jackson Dart's the player. They got three guys that are all have power five uh, starting uh, experience there. So, uh, but he was quite good last year. Another guy that, you know, again, he can run the ball. And then Will Rogers is a guy that you can't ever count out. I mean, he's a super veteran. I think this is going to be at least his third year starting, if not, you know, four years or three plus years starting. Seems like he's been there forever, right? Yeah. And uh, I mean, of course, that's a new offense. Uh, that's not going to be the the um, the Mike Leach offense. It's going to be they're still going to pass the ball, but they're going to pass the ball downfield more. Um, you can see that a lot of that that there. You know, they always say that the, they their passing game was a little bit of the extension of the uh, their running game. Really was built into the the short passes and the behind the line of scrimmage and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I would say uh, Jane Daniels is the obvious choice, but I would not be surprised to see, um, you know, uh, KJ Jefferson have a good year. Um, I think, you know, obviously he's, he's got some, he does not near have near as many weapons as, uh, as as Jane Daniels does at LSU. So long answer. Uh, There's a long answer, short answer. Jane Daniels seems to be the obvious choice. I know, I know there's a lot of dark horses and a lot of questions out there, but, uh, would you would you take Georgia's uh, QB room over Alabama's QB room? Because I know there's a lot of questions. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I mean, Milrow and and Ty Simpson and Buckner, those are all good quarterbacks. I mean, like, I mean, they're. I would probably Georgia's is one of the few quarterback rooms that I wouldn't take. You know, uh, Alabama's is, is quality, and, and they're going to get good play out of it. It's. I mean, I know it's it's Twitter fodder and and probably all the other social media to to, to trash talk, but. Yeah, I would definitely. I'm. I have a lot of confidence in in Mike Bobo being able to to take over for for um, for Todd for Todd Monken and and yeah, he knows how to play in the SEC. Um, you know, I think in 
2014, I think mean, we were number one or two or three, top three for sure, in scoring in all of FBS that year when his one of his last years playing call, uh, calling plays for Georgia. So, yeah, he's I, I think and and I think it's he's got a ton of weapons. I mean, Brock Bowers is just ridiculous. So I I, I just I mean. No, I, I think we're going to be great. And, and should something happen, you know, there's there's two guys that can maybe even beat him out in fall camp. You know, I think everyone's assuming, and I think it's all indications are that it's Carson Beck's jobs to lose. But I mean, you got two five stars or highly rated four stars right behind him. So yeah, right. the quarterback room is in good, good, good shape. And that's not even talking about who's coming in next year. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, that, that was one of my questions I was was going to ask. Uh, I know. You know, a lot of people, Mike Bobo, who's I think he's probably announced it 15 minutes after they knew Todd Monken was uh, leaving for the Baltimore Ravens. But uh, do you think that was a good hire? Do you think maybe they should have looked around? Was it just because? No, I, 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 I think that's why he was brought in as an analyst. You know, he and Mike Bobo, I mean, he and uh, uh, Kirby are t- super tight. I think they're roommates back in the day, played on the same team. I mean, it was it was obvious that he was brought in as the heir apparent, and I'm glad that they had a plan. I mean, because Todd Monken wasn't going to stay forever. Um, he's you know he's a he's a NF, he's got a guy that's got a lot of NFL experience. I'm sure he wants a, a crack back at an NFL head coaching job possibly. Um, so it made a lot of sense, and he sort of honestly had accomplished everything he could at Georgia, and, and I think you know so I I, I like that you're not scrambling. You know what you're going to do next. Uh, you've got the guy in place who's been with the team. He's been in the booth. He was calling, you know, he had plays and, and I believe he called some of those plays in the TCU game, or I can't remember some of the stuff, but yeah, I mean, Todd was highly complimentary of, of Bobo's work there. So I, I was not surprised. I mean, I know there's a lot of hand wringing. Hell, I was in the upper deck pouring rain, South Carolina with Todd Gurley in the backfield when he throws a tight end screen. I wasn't real happy with Bobo that day, particularly. Uh, but, but no, I'm, um, I think, you know, he's – and Mike Bobo never had the offensive line that he's going to have this year. He's never had the pass catchers. I mean, he had some good pass catchers back in the day, but, I mean, he's got just an elite offense and every tool you need in the toolbox to to, uh, keep putting up big, stupid, crazy offensive numbers. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, I hope Mike Bobo does not uh, make us start – Drinking more of our uh, our sponsor here sponsor <laughs> is uh, going to be te- Viva Tequila Seltzer dot com. Live long, live live it up. Uh, grapefruit, watermelon, uh, elderberry. Get twenty percent off. It's Hustle twenty for Viva Tequila Seltzer dot com. Again, that's uh, promo code Hustle twenty for twenty percent off. Uh, my personal favorite is the uh, watermelon. If you're at the golf course, tailgating coming up, or at the pool. It's a great uh, great beverage. That um, is a professional transition read right there bravo trey there you go i appreciate it appreciate that josh yeah follow you on the socials i know you're on twitter and you're on our website what's the best yeah p- yes it's easy i am at dog stats d-a-w-g stats um and dogstats.com. if you go right there it'll take you to the landing page for um for what for the little preview guide and then right now it's it's a 299 for the sec and then once we drop the whole thing we'll apply that sec purchase to the whole uh guide which will hopefully be out Certainly in time for media days, hopefully by the end of the week. Yeah, there it is. There's yeah. It. Yeah. There it is. And, um, and yeah, right now. yeah, please, please follow. Um, DMs are open. Always willing to take a, take a, uh, a question. And, and uh, I am also a contributor, a fan contributor for dogcentral.com, which is Graham coffee and Jason Brazel's website there. And I even share some of my data over there. I'll like upload some of these spreadsheets for anybody else to, to take and, model or mold or sort however they want so uh i i like to, the community that those guys have built over there at dogcentral.com yeah absolutely so if you really want get your hands on the data join that and then hit me up and then i'll be i can send you some spreadsheets that way yeah really appreciate you having on please please look them up at uh dog stats on uh twitter and then the uh, dogstat.com really great information um i was really getting to trying to do a deep dive and i'll probably look at check this out even more yeah Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for letting me uh, explain it. And and uh, yeah, I hope to hope to get some followers. I look forward to maybe coming on midseason. If we got some numbers we can talk about anytime. Yeah, that'd be great. I really appreciate it, Josh. And uh, that was another episode on the uh, Doghouse podcast. Make sure again to like, subscribe and share. That really helps us out. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. And appreciate it. Hey, Josh, go dogs. Go dogs.